Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Shakul, and I'm joined by Emmy from Healthy Emmy. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Fantastic. Well, Emmy's got a really interesting health coaching uh, program for weight loss, and I'm really excited to hear all about it. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to know a little bit about where this all started for you in terms of learning about you know, plant-based diets and getting into weight loss and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I tell people in a past life, I was a teacher. I was a math teacher and I went mm-hmm. to school to become a math teacher and I was a really good math teacher, but it wasn't what I wanted to do forever. What I really wanted to do was to help people heal both physically, emotionally, mentally through a plant-based diet. I had seen it happen with my parents. I put both of them on this program and their health healed dramatically. And that's what made me become so passionate about it. So I decided to become certified in nutrition on the side while I was a math teacher. Um, And then I decided I was going to move to Australia because I kind of wanted to go off on my own and pursue this dream and see what happened. And I didn't want anybody in the United States to bother me. (laughs) So I went over to your, uh, your land and the land down under, and I was a teacher there just so that I could have some form of income while I was pursuing this dream of mine and just seeing how it went. And I started health coaching while I was there, while I was in Australia, I started health coaching um, Mm. and it really took off. And I went from doing just one-on-one coaching with helping people lose weight on a plant-based diet to now I have a setup with my program where it's not just me that works with a client, but also every client has a nutrition coach and a, a mental health coach, a mindset coach to help them through a very holistic experience in their journey. Yeah. Awesome. And how did you come across the plant-based diet or have you been plant-based for a while? I, so I'm 27 now and I was 19 when I became plant-based. I am a runner. I'm a marathon runner. I love to run, love, 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 have always been a huge runner. And in my pursuit of becoming the best runner possible, because I am very competitive, I discovered Rich Roll Mm. and Rich Roll ate a plant-based diet. And I said, well, then I'm going to do that. (laughs) And quite literally overnight, I went on a a high carb plant-based diet and that was over seven years ago. And so I, you know, just on a whim transitioned. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I might have to get some tips for marathon running from you later on. Cause I'm, tra- I've just started training for a half marathon. So I'm kind of excited. No about that. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Where yeah. is it? Uh, Melbourne, the run Melbourne half marathon. All right. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to meet you and that'll be my excuse to get back to Melbourne. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Um, so, okay. So then you, you obviously, um, were very athletic and, and, you know, wanted to get the best performance. Uh, how did that, how did that, how did you find with the shift into eating more plants and a high carbohydrate kind of, you know, diet, which is kind of like what everyone tells you not to do. Um, <laughs> how did you find that shifted, you know, your health and, and your performance? I had never run so fast in my life. And, you know, I track all my runs and I was running like a minute faster for each mile, which on a six to eight mile run, that's insanity. I had never felt so energized overnight. I felt so much better. And that's what sparked my obsession was, Mm. okay. I was a already pretty healthy gal. And now I feel like I'm I've been given some potion that makes me feel incredible and fast and strong and alert Mm. and mentally stable. So there has to be more to this that I need to learn about. And I became obsessed. Mm. And and what did you find out from a performance point of view um, about, you know, the plant-based diet? It's like everything that I had been eating beforehand was just watered down, gunked up versions of the purest form of energy. I mean, plant pure glucose 
is exactly what we need in order to, to fire on all cylinders. Every single one of the thousands of trillions of cells in our body runs on glucose. Well, why was I wasting my time eating animal protein and, and all this junk beforehand? I should have just gone straight to the source. And I'm glad that I discovered it pretty early on, hmm. uh, which was a common thing that you hear from people who transition to this diet later in life is I wish I would have done this earlier because you really, it's incredible hmm. to transfer on yeah and you know oh. better than anybody. i can't compete with your story <laughs> how your health transformed yeah well, it's actually my brother's story um but oh, I've, yeah. had a, I've had a mess of there i mean his his story is unreal um and um yeah i can't compete with that either i mean <laughs> to, to, i mean yeah oh, to drop no. drop weight down to like he went down to the 35 kilos or something at five foot nine oh. when he was going through his healing it was it was unreal but um yeah, I think it's um, it's an amazing experience. I was 27 when I shifted, so like how old you are now when I when I shifted over to a plant based diet, and within a week it was just like something just shifted, and I was like all all the brain fog just went away, and and the alertness that you speak about was was just amazing, um, and and just like you, I was hooked. You know, I made the switch overnight, and I had I started reading every book <laughs> that I could get my hands on. Um, so weight loss, the inspiration on weight loss comes from your parents. I think you mentioned about that. What, tell us about, about that story. Yeah. So I started to take on some clients when I was living in Australia. I just started to mm. take on some one-on-one clients. And the clients that I felt I was very, very effective with were those that were looking to lose weight. Mm -hmm. As a math teacher, everything that I do is very systematic and very formulaic and it has order, rhyme, and reason. Mm -hmm. And with my clients that were looking to lose weight, my past as a math teacher aligned so beautifully with their journey to, to try to lose weight because there was a problem that had to be solved. Mm -hmm. And the answer, it was clear as day whether or not what we were doing was working. And so the, the weight loss thing just resonated with my coaching style and my teaching style. And that's where I saw the most success with clients. So I really niched down there with plant-based weight loss. And mm. it's, it's been hugely successful doing that. Uh, along that journey, though, what I've found is that this is about a lot more than weight loss when I'm working with clients. And it's not always what we're eating, but it's what's eating us which is why as I started to work with clients, I found that there was a huge emotional aspect to this and I needed to pull in some extra resources to help with that. And this, this program sort of evolved to be something where it's not just you and me, but there's two other professionals that are working with you to address not just the food stuff, but also the emotional side of things too. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's such a big deal when it comes down to making a lifestyle change. It's not just something you can do overnight. Some people can, but it takes time to absorb and 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 get to grips with the fact that okay, I need to make a big, big lifestyle change if I'm going to succeed in whatever I'm trying to pursue. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm I'm always interested to hear some very interesting stories about client successes and and you know can you can you run through like a couple of very interesting stories about how people have you know the, the changes that people have seen when they've moved over to a plant-based diet i find that many people that come to me are convinced that their body is broken because mm -hmm. they have tried everything in the book a lot of the people that i work with are very well informed about the plant-based diet actually okay. and they know about dr mcdougall and dr barnard and dr gregor very, very intelligent people. Mm. And they're convinced that either their body is broken or they, um, they've broken their metabolism. They just will never be able to do this, but there's some glimmer of hope because they're on a call with me. So they mm -hmm. think, well, maybe if I work with her, I'll figure this thing out. And a mm. great example, this is one of my clients, Dan. And I have a whole interview with my client, Dan, on my YouTube channel. He lost about a hundred pounds through the course of our work together. And when we first got on the call, the first thing he said to me is he goes, I just want to let you know, I'm a huge skeptic because I've tried this before. It doesn't work. The only thing that has ever worked with me with weight loss was when I did a 40 day fast and I did not eat. And that was the only thing that worked. And 
I love a good challenge. And as a former math teacher, I love to solve problems. So I get very excited when somebody says to me, I, I feel like I'm broken and this isn't going to work. And as I sort of spoiled, Dan lost a hundred pounds through the course of our work together. So it's basically that story in many iterations that people come convinced that their body is broken and that this won't work for them. And then we, we see otherwise. Okay. So what are some of the changes that people have to kind of make from, I know I'm generalizing here, but in terms of, you know, obviously they're following a plant-based diet, but what are some of the things they may not be doing right? Um, because we see this as well. People come on a plant-based diet and, you know, this, this, they just don't understand necessarily all the different things you need to be doing to get it right, especially when you're trying to heal something or, or, you know, as you say, lose weight, you can't just do, you have to make something a little bit more, I guess, um, targeted. A lot of the people that I work with, as I said, they're already eating a plant-based diet. They know Mm. their stuff and they're doing a great job on the diet. Mm. So there has to be another thing that's going on here, right? How can Mm. it be that they so much about this lifestyle. They're making these beautiful meals, but they're still not finding success. Mm. And what I usually find is that the relationship with food is their primary relationship. There's a lot of overeating going on. There's a lot Mm. of food going on Mm. and they've become so consumed with food that they're overeating or they're doing an a plus from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then what happens after that is what mm. they don't want to talk about. There's mm. something else emotional going on here. And food is fulfilling something that food was not intended to fulfill. So they're stuffing themselves to the brim on plant-based foods, or they're eating beautifully on plant-based foods. And then at the end of the day, they go and they reach for the vegan Ben and Jerry's or maybe the non-vegan Ben and Jerry's to fulfill something emotional. So Mm. believe it or not, what we do is not as much focus on the nutrition side of things because they know so much about the nutrition side of things. We focus on what what role is food taking in your life? Is it here for physical Mm. nourishment? Or is there something emotional happening here and you're abusing food? Mm, absolutely yes yeah. so it's, it's those kind of things that you're doing right you know for the majority of the time uh but you know it could be if you know a few times a day or a few times sorry a few times a week that there's just that little something that if you just take that out and, and find a way to sustainably take that out that you you get the solution now um when it comes to diet and weight loss you see a lot of programs out there that are very much catered towards restriction calorie restriction um and and of course they get very successful because if you don't eat much you're bound to lose weight um what's your take on on this and how does your program work is is it similar or is it is it different and why those crash diets are a beautiful business model because Mm. what they do is they they give you terrific results over the course of 28 days because you're not eating. And of course you're going to lose weight if you're eating 1200 calories, which by the way is enough calorie calories for a toddler to eat. If you Mm. are an adult eating that much, then you are starving yourself. In the Minnesota, Minnesota starvation experiment, they were eating something like 1600 calories. And those individuals ended up looking like Holocaust victims, how starved they were. So back to what I was saying, that if you Mm. are on these calorie restrictive diets, crash diets, you're going to get tremendous results in 28 days. And then your body's hunger drive is going to take over and you're going to have rebound weight gain. And Mm. then you're going to say, what the heck is wrong with me? I knew that I couldn't survive without that program. I have to go back and do that program again. And there you are a repeat customer of this Mm. diet program. And they are just laughing all their way to the bank. It is Mm. totally unethical. And I do not subscribe to that type of a business model at all, because this is, this is people's health. This is Mm. their body. This is their livelihood. And to put them on a recurring subscription, because you know that they're going to fail at the diet, your failure at a diet is not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of a diet industry that is unethical. Mm. 
And talk about what that does metabolically to someone because you know if you're all, if you're going back and forth like yo-yoing from uh, crashing with a calorie restriction and then you know obviously the rebound is you know maybe you can talk about some of those stories too um, that you've heard from your clients but I've seen it happen so many times like metabolically what happens to people when they go through that experience. Our genes are very smart and our Mm -hmm. genes want to protect us. And for every time that we lose and gain weight, our genes take note of that. And it says, okay, that, that body was just in a famine. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful with how I expend calories. And I'm just going to turn it down a little bit because I don't know when the next famine is coming. That's what the genes do. So when you do this over and over and over again, now your genes, they, they don't, trust you as much because you've been continuing to diet and diet and diet. This does not mean that your body is broken. It just means that your genes need to build a little bit more trust with you again. As we've learned through a plant-based diet, you can turn certain genes on and you can turn them off. And by fueling yourself abundantly through a plant-based diet, you're going to build trust with your body because when you're eating a plant-based diet, you're eating way larger quantities than you are with these teeny tiny diets. And that sheer fact in and of itself, that the body's having food come in so often, every few hours, huge amounts of food, and it's feeling nourished. That's going to make those genes that we're trying to keep you safe, quiet down a little bit, and you're still going to be able to lose weight but know that your body needs to, it needs to trust you again. And so by getting into this plant-based diet, it's not going to be the magical quick weight loss that you had with those old diets. Your body has to heal a little bit and trust you again. Yeah, absolutely. And so we've got, we've got one part of the industry, which is the, the crash diets and the calorie restriction. Um, the other part is the carbophobia um, that comes with, um, you know, carbs make you fat. I mean, it's kind of been a, a catchphrase of, of the industry for, for a couple of decades, I suppose. Um, so, you know, I know that you focus on a, a whole food plant-based diet, which is quite a high carbohydrate diet. Um, what would you say about the whole carbophobia or carbs make you fat kind of mentality? So what happens when you cut out carbs is your body releases tons of water for every gram of glycogen that you store and glycogen is stored carbohydrate, your body stores water. So when you stop eating carbs, your body lets go of a lot of water, which means if you stop eating carbs today, you're going to get on the scale in two days and the number on the scale is going to be down. This is not a reflection of fat loss. It's a reflection of a dehydrated body. A dehydrated body is not a healthy body. It's a sick body. So when you stand on the scale in two days and the number on the scale is down, that's your body saying to you, we're sick, we're not hydrated. So people go on these low carb diets and they say, "I'm look at me, I'm losing all this weight. You're just dehydrated is what you are. And then ultimately, because the body's preferred source of fuel is glucose, it's carbohydrates, you get so hungry, you end up eating way more than you would if you ever went on this diet in the first place, you step on the scale again and you say, there it goes again. Those carbs have made me fat. I was doing so well when I wasn't eating the carbs, but all that's happened here is that your body is rehydrated. You haven't gained any fat. Where this ever came from that carbs do make you fat baffles me because the process of turning carbs into fat is not an efficient process in the body at all. The body hates when it has to do it because it costs so much money metabolically. Look at the science, people. Carbs just do not readily turn into fat. It's not the way the body works. Mm. I think maybe it, 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 it can come from a misrepresentation of what a carbohydrate actually is. Like, for uh, example, uh, yeah, you know, like a donut, right? That's not uh, a high carbohydrate food. <laughs> you know, maybe talk about some of the misconceptions around what is a high carbohydrate. You know, you've probably heard it all um, around what people kind of do and say, oh, I ate so many carbohydrates. What are they putting on these foods? Nicole, from, from your lips to God's ears, because people <laughs> will say potatoes make me fat, but they're neglecting the butter and the sour cream that's on there. Mm. That's 
problem is. Or I'll hear people say that sugar, my problem is sugar. I'm always going for sugar, sugar, sugar. And I go, what does sugar mean to you? And they'll say cookies, pastries, cakes. Well, it'd be interesting for us together to look up doctor or not doctor, but to look up everything that has been done with Walter Kempner and Mm -hmm. see that a diet of rice, fruit, juice, and table sugar actually reversed hypertension in clients and saved the lives of clients that were obese and overweight. And all they were eating was white rice, fruit juice, and table sugar. Mm. So sugar is not the enemy here. What, what the problem is, is actually this, that in the natural world, there mm. does not exist any food that is high in sugar, high in fat, and high in salt. Mm. Each one of these things, something that's high in sugar, something that's high in fat, and something that's high in salt is going to make the dopamine in our brains go wild. We light up like a Christmas tree when we eat something that's high in sugar. Mm. We light up like a Christmas tree when we eat something that's high in fat. And we light up like a Christmas tree when we eat something that's high in salt. What food companies do is they say, oh, wait a minute. Her dopamine goes wild when she eats sugar. Her dopamine goes wild when she eats fat. And her dopamine goes wild when she eats salt. So what if we take all of those things and we put them together? Mm. And that's where I present you with something like French fries, where we've Mm. taken potatoes, which are high in carbs, high in sugar, we deep fry them. So now they're high in fat. And then we sprinkle salt on top of them. Mm. If you think of every food that's addictive, it's because it's the triple threat. It's the combination of these three things. Mm. Now, um, when you're talking about that, that study of, or the work by Dr. Dr. Kempner, you said hypertension. He also worked on diabetes, didn't he? Yes. And yeah, you know, the, that's the, the, the big blood sugar thing. They all diabetes is caused by sugar. Um, mm-hmm. you know, do you see that people start to reverse some of the conditions and since can start getting rid of some of their medications and things when they follow your program? Yes. And, you know, as, as Dr. Barnard talks about, sometimes it can happen so quickly that their blood sugar will drop dramatically because this is so effective. So for mm. anybody who does have type two diabetes, which by the way is, fully reversible on a plant-based diet. If you haven't read Dr. Neil Barnard's book, please don't walk, run to get it because it is so, so informative and so healing Hmm. that the the plant-based diet is so effective in reversing type two diabetes. It can actually almost be dangerous. Hmm. And so if you are going to go on a fully plant-based diet in the hopes of reversing your type two diabetes, which you can and will, by the way, you do want to let your doctor know that you're doing this so that mm. you can make sure that your insulin is, is properly monitored. Yeah. And check your blood sugar regularly. <laughs> yes. um, so the, the next thing I wanted to kind of go on about is that uh, I know you, your program's called slim on starch, isn't it? So it's following this kind of like the start solution model and things like that. Now, um, it, a lot of people can't really come to grips with the fact that you can eat a good volume of food, eat a lot of carbs, and then lose a lot of weight. Those things don't seem to compute, right? So, you know, I'm sure you've heard it many times. Oh, you know, she says she does this, but she's probably restricting somewhere. Um, You know, talk to us about what your kind of, what your diet looks like and, um, you know, you know, how do you address some of those criticisms that you probably get all the time? Yeah. So the first thing I'll say is you don't believe anything until you have evidence that it works for you. So for the people that don't believe it, give it a shot. And if it doesn't work, you can always go back to what you were doing beforehand, but at least Mm. try it out and see if it works. Now, if you are an avid watcher of my YouTube channel, which I'm sure your audience, you know, maybe they've never seen me before. So come over to my YouTube channel and see, but it would be really hard for me to fake this thing because you are (laughs) at my house. You're at my parents' house. My dad is making us dinner. I'm over there all the time. You really get an inside look to my life and you're able to see, okay, she's really walking the walk here. Um, And here's another story that I love. One of my clients was actually uh, the girl who lived next to me in college because I was eating this way in college. And seven years later, she said, 
I remember you and I remember you eating this way in college and you were so healthy and vibrant. And so I want to be a client of yours now. And that was before I was studying to become a math teacher and I was mm. just living this way. Um, actually, I when I was studying abroad, I had to share a kitchen with like 20 people and they knew me as the potato girl once again before I ever did any of this. So this really is the true blue me. Um, yeah. Sure. I'll tell you what a day of eating looks like. I'll tell you what I ate today because it's the end of the day where I am. Mm -hmm. So I started off with my oatmeal, flaxseed, cinnamon, banana. It's like a go-to for me. And then I had some lentil soup. And then I had a meal of my favorite meal in the world, which is a Japanese sweet potato with cinnamon and steamed veggies, which are my favorite steamed veggies are Brussels sprouts zucchini and cauliflower mm -hmm. and then I normally would have eaten something already by now but we're on this call right now so I had another serving of oatmeal I might have something after this call I might not um but yeah that's what a day of eating usually looks like so just a whole lot of like cooked complex carbohydrates and vegetables is, and some fruit thrown in as well is most mostly what you eat and how many calories would you eat on average in a day I honestly have no idea. I really don't, especially mm. because all, the food that I eat doesn't come in packages. So I mm -hmm. couldn't even tell you, you know, one potato is this big, one potato is that big. I really, hand to God, have no idea how many calories I eat in a day. This is a huge thing that I focus on with my clients. Mm. Mm honoring your hunger fullness cues and letting your body be the guide because our body has wisdom that our brain will never be able to comprehend. And if we eat whole plant foods, you don't have to micromanage through calories. You have a built-in calorie counter, which is your body's hunger fullness cues. It'll tell you when it needs more and it'll tell you when it's had enough. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, as long as you don't you focus on eating till you're satiated, I think that's, that's the main thing um, that people should focus on. Um, I think it was just an interesting question because I'm probably a lot of people are wondering how many calories does healthy Emmy eat in a day, you know, but yeah, I mean, we don't even, I mean, I, I remember, I think I counted it for the first couple of months and, and then I was like, okay, I understand what fullness feels like. And I haven't counted it for the last nine years. So, um, what did you land at when you counted? I, uh, somewhere between, it's around about 3000. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are a highly <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think so, you know, when you're training, it always increases. So, you know, if I'm doing a lot of training, sometimes I can go to four thousand, sometimes five thousand. Um <laughs> in a, in a no, day. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. But um I mean there was a there was a day I, I ate 30 bananas and then had a like potato meal after that too yeah wow it was yeah and you know you got you can't just do that if you're sitting on the couch so you, you you're gonna need to be burning that off um, or using those calories um okay so um yeah so it, it sounds like it's just a really sustainable way of eating that that people don't feel hungry do you find talk about some of the things that people are saying um as they go through this experience and the weight starts dropping they're not actually hungry as the weight starts dropping the most rewarding thing to hear from my clients is that for the first time in their lives they're not thinking about food they're not thinking about weight loss mm. they're not occupied with this and they get to actually rediscover who they are and what they're interested in because mm. dieting and weight loss has become a hobby it's become all they've thought about and all they've been consumed by I mean, these people basically have degrees in nutrition because they've done so much studying on all these different diets mm. and to give them the opportunity to say, okay, we're going to take care of the food thing. We're going to take care of the weight thing. That's going to be covered. Let's look at the other stuff that life has to offer outside of food and outside of weight loss. And that is the most rewarding thing. And what I really am the most interested in is helping a client discover what their passions and hobbies and interests are outside of mm. food and weight loss. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, playing devil's advocate here for a second, a lot of people might say, oh, well, Emmy's a marathon runner and she does so much exercise. And so... She can eat all the carbs she wants and, and not have any problems, you know, 
keeping the weight off. What role does exercise play in, in weight loss? And I'm sure you've found people that are exercise heaps and still can't, you know, push the weight. Can you kind of let's talk about that for a second? There was a very interesting study done, and I want to make sure I name is say his name correctly. It's Herman, and then something like Ponser. Do you know who I'm talking about? Not 100. percent All right, let me look it up. I think it's Herman Ponser. It is Herman Ponser. He has a book called Burn, which is super super interesting about how the body uses calories during exercise. This is going to shock some people. So I hope you're sitting down when you listen to it, that the amount of calories that our body burns through exercise is really only about 5% of our daily calories, which is shocking. And everything else is neat, non-exercise activity, you know, moving my hands right now, that's body burning calories, but the majority of it is just keeping you alive. You burn, if you're in a coma laying in a hospital bed, you're burning calories. This is why they have a a tube feed and that's what keeps you alive. You have to stay alive through some method and your body burns calories to keep you alive. So exercise is not, is not going to burn off whatever it is that you're eating. Um, And I took a break from running for about three months last year. I just really felt like my body needed to rest and needed to recover from years and years and years of pounding pavement. And did my weight go up? No. Did my weight go down? It may have actually gone down because I was probably losing some muscle from not getting out and running every day. So from somebody who eats this way and had three or four months of not exercising, did not gain weight. And I don't prescribe any exercise to my clients because the answer is not in the running shoes and it's not in the gym memberships it's in the food nutrition is king yeah yeah fully yeah um okay so i'm gonna put you on the spot uh for for a second here and i would like you to talk to the audience about you know just give some really uh valuable tips that people can use like that you found through your years of kind of coaching people through this what are some of the main things that people need to be aware of when they're trying to go on a weight loss journey? And, um, you know, what are some of the, maybe, maybe after that we can go into some of the myths as well. What are the key kind of, um, I guess, things that people should know when they're starting their weight loss journey? Sure. So the first thing is you have to establish your why, why you're doing this. Mm. And if you say I'm doing this because I want to lose weight, mm-mm-mm, not going to pass my test. We got to go much <laughs> deeper than that. Mm -hmm. There is an exercise called the seven levels deep exercise. You can search it on YouTube. You can Google it. And it's a very simple exercise. So all you do is I say, why do you want to lose weight? And you answer that question. You say, I want to lose weight because I want to feel better. And then I say, why do you want to feel better? And then you answer that. You say, I want to feel better because I don't want to feel sick anymore. And then I say, why don't you want to feel sick anymore? And we do that seven times until we get to the real root of what's going on here and why it is that you want to lose weight. If you don't have a strong why, then we're going to be in big trouble because this is going to be something surface level that you don't Mm. prioritize. Mm. But if your why is so deep that you make it a priority, then you're going to be successful. Mm. So that's the first thing, establish your why. The second thing that I would love for you to do is to imagine that you have this all figured out. Imagine that you've already lost the weight. Imagine that you are living your happiest, healthiest life. It's 10 years from now. Tell me what a day looks like. Because for many people, so much of their day is caught up with finding the new diet, cooking these new recipes, trying new things out, listening to a podcast, watching a YouTube video, all about weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. Well, we need to find out who you're going to be at the end of this journey. And I'll tell you why, because a lot of people lose the weight and then they say, well, who the heck am I now? And that triggers Mm self-sabotage because they figured out the weight thing. And then you go, wait a minute. All I used to do was to research diets and to listen to these podcasts. And I don't have that anymore. So they self-sabotage to go right back to the beginning and they go through this journey over and over again. So we need to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. So you almost like get to the end of it and you, you, your, your kind of reason for doing it 
wasn't strong enough and then you don't as, as you said you don't know where you you know who you are or what you want to do oh wow anyway, carry on that's really fascinating it's yeah. scary for people yeah. too yeah. so the, the weight loss thing that's a distraction so okay i'll, mm. I'll the same thing i've been doing for the past 40 years because mm. that's what i know it can numb me out a little bit because mm. i don't want to I don't know who I am and I haven't been living my fullest life for the past four decades, for example. Mm, that's powerful. That's powerful. Wow. And any practical tips? Preparation is the key to success. You must establish a food prep day and treat it like a religion mm-hmm. because I've had people who don't know a carb from a protein, from a fat, and they've been my most successful clients. Why? Because they said, Sunday is my food prep day and I'm just going to food prep whatever Emmy says that I need to do. And that's that. It's all taken care of. Mm. And if that is you hate food prep, trust me, I get it. Hire a college kid or a high school kid for $10 an hour to come to your house for 20 bucks on a Sunday and they can do it all for you. Mm. No, never thought of that. (laughs) I'll send you a bill for that advice. (laughs) Um, All right, cool. Um, Yeah, I think, um, you know, in terms of the myths around weight loss, because there's a huge amount of misinformation, like we find it all the time with the work we do as well. Um, Talk about some of the, like maybe the top three myths and, and, and kind of how you can overcome those. Myth number one is that you have to eat breakfast because breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Where that comes from is there was a study that was done by, it was breakfast cereals, wouldn't you know? Mm. And they promote their product. So what they did was they took two groups of kids. One of the kids ate breakfast before going to school. And the other group of kids was a low SES, low socioeconomic status group of kids that didn't have breakfast before going to school. Now, I come from the world of education, and I know that higher SES kids get better test scores than lower SES kids, because lower SES kids don't have the reinforcement at home, and they don't have the support to help them to learn how to read and to do their homework with them and everything along those lines. Hmm. So they took the kids who had breakfast before they went to school because they could afford it because they were higher SES. They got better test scores than the kids that were lower SES couldn't afford to have breakfast before school and weren't being supported by their parents in their educational endeavors. Mm. And what did they find? That the higher SES kids got better test scores. And so breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And so we we believed that for all this time, right? And so what we don't want to do is eat a meal just because we're supposed to eat a meal and it's important. What we want to do is eat a meal when our body says it's time for me to have a meal. So if it's 7 a.m. and you're not hungry, don't eat. Wait until you get a hunger signal. That's the first thing. That's, mm. the That's fascinating because, uh, I mean, over the last few years, we've seen a bit of research come out that says that breakfast is one of the most super important meals for weight loss. And I found that hard to understand because a lot of the body's kind of like r- removal and healing and, and kind of recycling of things happens in those early hours of the morning. So on one side, I've, I've, I'm I'm going back on my human physiology understanding and I'm going, no, no, that doesn't fully make sense. Cause you know, even with inter- intermittent fasting and the information that we learn about that is that kind of like, if you delay that, that first meal of the day a little bit, you get a lot more um, metabolic activity going on in your body. Um, so I, I was conflicted on that because it didn't kind of add up. So it's very interesting that you tell me that. And from experience as well, because I always, I always love it hearing people who've done it and and are working with people and see that experience instead of just a theory. And something very similar is uh, the idea that you can't eat late at night um, Mm. because quote unquote turns into fat. If you Mm -hmm. eat something 8 PM, for example, if Mm. your body sends you a hunger cue, then it's not going to take whatever you've eaten and turn it into fat. If it sends Mm. you a hunger cue, that means we're low on fuel. We need some more fuel. So it's okay for you to eat no matter what time it is. The, the, you can't eat past a certain time. That's a myth when it mm-hmm. comes to weight loss. Well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then, I mean, there may be yeah. other reasons for not eating too late and for you know, digestion reasons and, and other things. But if, you, as you say, if you are hungry, that you probably haven't eaten enough for the day and you should probably satisfy that because if you don't, then you may not go to sleep as easily and other things like that as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And that's the bottom line. The golden rule of all of this is that you have to honor your body's hunger cues. You have to. It is mm. the most important thing when it comes to losing weight is honoring your body's hunger cues. Fascinating. And then I say the last myth is probably our favorite that you have to have protein in order to lose <laughs> weight. If that makes any sense. I mean, somebody tell me where that comes from and then I'll debunk it. It just doesn't make any sense at all to me. We don't even have to put any time into it even in the discussion. I mean, yeah, I think protein, again, one of the most exaggerated macronutrients, you know, like the importance of it. Yes, you need it, but you're going to get it, you know, if you eat enough calories. I think that's probably the end of the discussion um, in terms of how important protein is, especially from a weight loss perspective. Um, No, that's fantastic. All right. Um, Yeah, so thanks for getting put on the spot there and really insightful stuff i mean yeah <laughs> yeah i think um yeah I, I i was i have been kind of questioning that whole breakfast thing for a couple of years now so it's kind of cleared it up for me um right uh, i guess just to kind of round out round out the interview here uh i always like to get some advice from from the people I interview around. Okay. Say you're sitting there talking to someone who's uh, kind of struggling right now with their weight or they're, you know, they're not sure what they should be doing. What are some of the key bits of advice that you'd give? So say you're in like an initial coaching call and someone's like, I don't know what to do. What would you say to them to kind of get them kind of heading in the right direction? Well, first I want to know where this all started for them Mm. and how it got us to today's call. I want to know everything about their background and how it got us to the point that we're even here talking. Mm. Then I want us to have an idea of where it is that we want to go. What do we want this to look like at the end? We need Mm. to have a sort of roadmap. What are your goals? What do you want this to look like 10 years from now? Once you've taken care of all this. And then we're going to take the mentality of just chipping away at this. We're not going to fix this in a day. We're not going to fix this in two days. We're not going to fix it in two weeks. These are lifelong habits. So it's okay for us to go slow. The slower you go, the faster you get there. We're going to chip away at the habits that you've had in place for a very long time so that every time we take a step forward, we're not going to go back on it. Because every diet that you've done in the past, you went from zero to 100. And how did that go for you? You went right back to zero and right back to hundred. What if we do this differently? We do it a little bit slowly. Be patient Mm. with yourself. You can't see your own hair grow. So you might not be able to see the progress, but I can see the progress and I will remind you of it. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. That was very insightful and um, you're doing some really amazing work in helping a lot of people improve the quality of their lives. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, You know, for... Everyone who's watching this, you know, I will be putting all of the links where you can find uh, Emmy's work down in the description box below. So go and have a look. And, you know, if you're interested in weight loss and you want to kind of change your life, go and have a, have a chat to her and see how she can help you out. Um, in terms of people who are watching this video, thank you so much for watching. If you've been listening to the podcast, please share it and, and follow the podcast IBD Heal so that you can get notified of all our uploads every monday there's a new episode coming out uh if you're watching on youtube please subscribe and hit that little bell notification icon and go and check out emmy's youtube channel too while you're at it um and hit the like button give emmy a like for the amazing information that she has shared with us today and if you have any questions there's a comment section down below you know ask away we'll do our best to respond um, as, as soon as we can and um share it too there's a lot of people out there that want to lose weight and here's a solution Mm-hmm. um so yeah i'd just like to say thank you again emmy thank you so much for joining me here today and um for everyone who's listening or watching make sure you eat plants and lots of them take care everyone thanks emmy thank you